This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, must volunteer, please contact LibriVox.org. Recording by John Hicken. The Devil's Dictionary by Ambrose Bierce. The letter C. Cahaba. Noun. A large stone presented by the Archangel Gabriel to the Patriarch Abraham and preserved at Mecca. The Patriarch had perhaps asked the Archangel for bread. Cabbage. Noun. A familiar kitchen garden vegetable about as large and wise as a man's head. The cabbage is so called from Cabasius, a prince who, on ascending the throne, issued a decree appointing a high council of empire consisting of the members of his predecessor's ministry and the cabbages in the royal garden. When any of his majesty's measures of state policy miscarried conspicuously, it was gravely announced that several members of the high council had been beheaded, and his murmuring subjects were appeased. Calamity Noun A more than commonly plain and unmistakable reminder that the affairs of this life are not of our own ordering. Calamities are of two kinds, misfortune to ourselves and good fortune to others. Callous Adjective Gifted with great fortitude to bear the evils afflicting another. When Zeno was told that one of his enemies was no more, he was observed to be deeply moved. What? said one of his disciples. You weep at the death of an enemy? Ah, it is true, replied the great stoic, but you should see me smile at the death of a friend. Calumnus. Noun. A graduate of the school for scandal. Camel. Noun. A quadruped. Displapes humpidosus. Of great value to the show business. There are two kinds of camels, the camel proper and the camel improper. It is the latter that is always exhibited. Cannibal. Noun. Gastronome of the old school, who preserves a simple taste and adheres to the natural diet of the pre-pork period. Cannon. Noun. An instrument employed in the rectification of national boundaries. Canonicals. Noun. The motley worn by jesters of the court of heaven. Capital. Noun. The seat of misgovernment. That which provides the fire, the pot, the dinner, the table, and the knife and fork for the anarchist. The part of the repast that himself supplies is the disgrace before meat. Capital punishment. A penalty regarding the justice and expediency of which Many worthy persons, including all the assassins, entertain grave misgivings. Carmelite, noun. A mendicant friar of the order of Mount Carmel. At death of the rising out one day, across Mount Carmel he took his way, where he met a mendicant monk, some three or four quarters drunk, with a holy leer and a pious grin, ragged and fat and a saucy as sin, who held out his hands and cried, Give, give, and chant his name, I pray. Give in the name of the church, O oh, give. Give that her holy sons may live. And death replied, my long and wide. I'll give, holy father, I'll give thee a ride. With the rattle and bang of his bones he sprang, with his famous pale horse, with his spear. By the neck and foot seized the fellow, and put him astride with his face to the rear. The monarch laughed loud with a sound that fell, like clods on the coffin sound in shell. Ho ho, a beggar on horseback, they say, will ride to the devil and thump, felt the flat of his dart on a rump, and the charger which gallops away. Faster and faster and faster it flew, till the rocks and the flocks and the trees that grew by the road were dim, and blended and blue, to the wild, wild eyes of the rider in size, resembling a couple of blackberry pies. Death laughed again, as a tomb might laugh, at a burial service spoiled and the mourner's intentions foiled by the body erecting its head and objecting to further proceedings in its behalf. Many a year and many a day have passed since these events away. The monk has long been a dusty horse, and death has never recovered his horse, but a fire got hold of its tail and steered it within the pale. 
and a monetary grey where the beast was stabled and fed with barley and oil and bread till fatter it grew than the fattest friar and his own due course was appointed prior by G. J. Carnivorous Adjective Addicted to the cruelty of devouring the timorous vegetarian his airs and signs Cartesian Adjective Related to Descartes a famous philosopher, author of the celebrated dictum Cognito Ergo Sum, whereby he was pleased to suppose he demonstrated the reality of human existence. The dictum might be improved, however, thus, Cognito Cognito Ergo Cognito Sum. I think that I think, therefore I think that I am, as close an approach to certainty as any philosopher has yet made. Cat, noun, a soft, indestructible automaton by nature to be kicked when things go wrong in the domestic circle. This is a dog, this is a cat, this is a frog, this is a rat, one dog, new cat, jump frog, no rat. By Levinson. Cavalier, noun, a critic of our own work. Cemetery, noun, an isolated suburban spot. Where mourners match flies, poets write as a target, and stone cutters spell for a wager. The inscriptions following will serve to illustrate the success attained in these limping games. His virtues were so conspicuous that his enemies, unable to overlook them, denied them, and his friends, to whose loose lives they were a, a rebuke, represented them as vices. They are here commemorated by his family, who shared them. In the earth we here prepare a place to lay our little Clara. Thomas M. and Mary Fraser, P.S. Gabriel Eraser. Centaur. Noun. One of a race of persons who lived before the division of labour had been carried to such a pitch of differentiation, and who followed the primitive economic maxim, every man his own horse. The best of the lot was Sean, who, to the wisdom and virtues of the horse, and the fleetness of man. The scripture story of the head of John the Baptist on a charger is that pagan myths of somewhat sophisticated sacred history. Cerberus Noun The watchdog of Hades, whose duty it was to guard the entrance, against whom or what does not clearly appear. Everybody, sooner or later, has to go there, and nobody wanted to go off the entrance. Cerberus is known to have had three heads and some of the poets have credited him with as many as a hundred. Professor Graybill, whose clerky erudition and profound knowledge of Greek give his opinion great weight, has averaged all the estimates and makes the number 27, a judgment that would be entirely conclusive if Professor Graybill had known A, something about dogs, and B, something about arithmetic. Childhood Noun the period of human life intermediate between the idiocy of infancy and the folly of youth, two removes from the sin of manhood, and three from the remorse of age. Christian Noun One who believes that the New Testament is a divinely inspired book, and properly suited to the spiritual needs of his neighbour. One who follows the teachings of Christ, insofar as they are not inconsistent with a life of sin. I dreamed I stood upon a hill, and lo, the godly multitudes walked to and fro, beneath, in seventh garments fitly clad, with pious men, appropriately sad, and all the church bells played a solemn din, a fire alarm to those who lived in sin. Then saw I gazing thoughtfully below, with tranquil face, upon that holy show, a tall, spare figure, in a robe of white, whose eyes diffused a melancholy light. God keep you, stranger, I exclaimed. You are, no doubt, your habit shows it, from afar, and yet I entertain the hope that you, that these good people, are a Christian, too. He raised his eyes, and with a look so stern, it made me with a thousand blushes burn. Replied, his manner with disdain was spiced. What? I a Christian? No, indeed, I am Christ. By G. J. 
Circus. Noun. A place where horses, ponies and elephants are permitted to see men, women and children acting the fool. Clairvoyant. Noun. A person, commonly a woman, who has the power of seeing that which is invisible to her patron, namely, that he is a blockhead. Clarinet. Noun. An instrument of torture operated by a person with cotton in his ears. There are two instruments that are worse than a clarinet. Two clarinets. Clergyman. Noun. A man who undertakes the management of our spiritual affairs as a method of bettering his temporal ones. Cleo. Noun. One of the nine muses. Cleo's function was to preside over history, which she did with great dignity. Many of the prominent citizens of Athens occupying seats on the platform, the meetings being addressed by Messrs. Zephon, Herodotus, and other popular speakers. Clock. Noun. A machine of great moral value to man, allaying his concern for the future by reminding him what a lot of time remains to him. A busy man complained one day, I get no time. What's that you say? Good out his friend, a lazy quiz. You have, sir, all the time there is. There's plenty too, and don't you doubt it. We're never for an hour without it. By Persil Crofe Closed fisted. Adjective. Unduly desirous of keeping that which many meritorious persons wish to obtain. Close fisted Scotchman, Johnson cried, to fifty J. Macpherson, see me, I am ready to divide with any worthy person. Said Jamie, that is very true, the boast requires no backing, and all are worthy, sir, to you, who have what you are lacking. By Anita M. Bobe. Conabout, noun, a man who piously shuts himself up to meditate upon the sin of wickedness, and to keep it fresh in his mind, joins a brotherhood of awful examples. O Conobite, O Conobite, monastical gregarian, you differ from the anchorite, that solitudinarian. With volleyed prayers you wound old Nick, with dropping shots he makes him sick. By Quincy Giles. Comfort. Noun. The state of mind produced by contemplation of a neighbour's uneasiness. Commendation. Noun. The tribute that we pay to achievements that resemble, but do not equal, our own. Commerce. Noun. A kind of transaction in which A plunders from B the goods of C, and for compensation B picks the pocket of D of money belonging to E. Commonwealth. Noun. An administrative entity operated by an incalculable multitude of political parasites, logically active but fortuitously efficient. This Commonwealth's capital's corridors of view so thronged with a hungry and indolent crew of clerks, pages, porters, and all attaches whom rascals appoint under popular pays. That a cat cannot slip through a thicket of shins, nor hear its own shriek, but the noise of their chins. On clerks and on pages and porters and all, misfortune attend and disaster befall. May life be to them a succession of hurts, may fleas by the bushel inhabit their shirts. May aches and diseases encamp in their bones, their lungs full of tubercles, bladders of stones. May microbes bacilli their tissues infest, and tapeworms securely their bowels digest. May corn cobs be snared without hope in their hair, and frequent impalement their pleasure impair. Disturbed by their dreams, by the awful discourse of audible sofas, the pulchrally horse, by chairs acrobatic and waving floors, the mattress that kicks and the pillow that snores, sons of cupidity cradled in sin, the criminal ranks made a death angel thin, avenging the friend whom I couldn't work in. By K. Q. Compromise, noun. Such an adjustment of conflicting interests, as gives each adversary the satisfaction of thinking he has got what he ought not to have. 
and is deprived of nothing except what was justly his due. Compulsion, noun. Eloquence of power. Condole, verb intransitive. To show that bereavement is a smaller evil than sympathy. Confidant, confidant. Noun. One entrusted by A, with the secrets of B, confided by him to C. Congratulation. Noun. The civility of envy. Congress. Noun. A body of men who meet to appeal laws. Connoisseur. Noun. A specialist who knows everything about something and nothing about anything else. An old wine biber having been smashed in a railway collision, some wine was poured on his lips to revive him. Pulliac, 1873, he murmured, and died. Conservative, noun. A statesman who is enamoured of existing evils, as distinguished from the liberal, who wishes to replace them with others. Consolation, noun. The knowledge that a better man is more unfortunate than yourself. Consul, noun. In American politics, a person who, having failed to secure an office from the people, is given one by the administration, on condition that he leave the country. Consult, verb intransitive, to seek another's disapproval of a course already decided on. Contempt, noun. The feeling of a prudent man for an enemy who is too formidable safely to be opposed. Controversy, noun. A battle in which spittle or ink replaces the injurious cannonball and the inconsiderate bayonet. In controversy with the facile tongue, that bloodless warfare of the old and young, so seek your adversary to engage that on himself he shall exhaust his rage, and like a snake that's fastened to the ground, with his own fangs inflict the fatal wound. You ask me how this miracle is done. Adopt his own opinions, one by one, and taunt him to refute them. In his wrath he will sweep them pitilessly from his path, advance then gently all you wish to prove, each proposition prefaced with, as you so well remarked, or as you wisely say, and I cannot dispute, or, by the way, this view of it which, better far expressed, runs through your argument, then leave the rest to him, secure that he'll perform his trust, and prove your views intelligent and just. By Conmore Apple Brunet Convent, now, a place of retirement for women who wish for leisure to meditate upon the vice of idleness. Conversation, now, a fair to the display of the minor mental commodities, each exhibitor being too intent upon the arrangement of his own wares to observe those of his neighbour. Coronation, now, a ceremony of investing a sovereign with the outward and visible signs of his divine right to be blown sky-high with a dynamite bomb. Corporal, noun, a man who occupies the lowest rung of the military ladder. Fiercely the battle raised and sad to tell, our corporal heroically fell. Fame from her height looked down upon the ball, and said he hadn't very far to fall. By Giacomo Smith. Corporation. Now, an ingenious device for obtaining individual profit without individual responsibility. Corsair. Now, a politician of the seas. Court fool. Now, the plaintiff. Coward. Now, one who, in a perilous emergency, thinks with his legs. Crayfish. Now, a small crustacean very much resembling the lobster, but less indigestible. In this small fish I take it that human wisdom is admirably figured and symbolised. But whereas a crayfish doth move only backward, it can have only retrospection, seeing naught but the perils already past, so the wisdom of man doth not enable him to avoid the follies that beset his course, but only to apprehend their nature afterward.
attributed to Sir James Merivale. Creditor Noun One of a tribe of savages dwelling beyond the financial straits and dreaded for their desolating incursions. Cremona Noun A high-priced violin made in Connecticut. Critic Noun A person who boasts himself hard to please because nobody tries to please him. There is a land of pure delight beyond Jordan's flood where saints appelled all in white fling back the critic's mod. And as he legs it through the skies his pelt of sable hue he sorrows sore to recognise the missiles that he threw by Owen Goof. Cross Noun an ancient religious symbol erroneously supposed to owe its significance to the most solemn event in the history of Christianity but really antedating it by thousands of years. By many it has been believed to be identical with the crux and sata of the ancient phallic worship but it has been traced even beyond all that we know of that to the rites of primitive peoples. We have today the white cross as a symbol of chastity and the red cross as a badge of benevolent neutrality in war. Having in mind the former, the Reverend Father Gesselaska Jape smites the liar to the effect following. Be good, be good, the sisterhood cry out in holy chorus, and to dissuade from sin parade their various charms before us. But why, oh why, has now an eye seen her of winsome manner, and used for grace and pretty face flaunt in a white cross banner? Now where's the need of speech and screed to better our behaving? A simpler plan for saving man, at first is he worth saving? His dears, when he declines to flee, the bad thoughts that beset him, he ignores the law as to a straw, and wants to sin, don't let him. Quibono, Latin. What good would that do me? Cunning, noun. The faculty that distinguishes a weak animal, or person, from a strong one. It brings its possessor much mental satisfaction and great material adversity. An Italian proverb says, The furrier gets the skins of more foxes than asses. Cupid, noun, the so called god of love. This bastard creation of a barber's fancy was no doubt inflicted upon mythology for the sins of its deities. Of all unbeautiful and inappropriate conceptions, this is the most reasonless and offensive. The notion of symbolising sexual love by a semi-sexless babe and comparing the pains of passion to the wounds of an arrow, of introducing this pudgy homunculus into art grossly to materialise the subtle spirit and suggestion of the work, this is eminently worthy of the age that, giving it birth, lays on the doorstep of prosperity. Curiosity Noun An objectionable quality of the female mind. The desire to know whether or not a woman is cursed with curiosity is one of the most active and insatiable passions of the masculine soul. Curse, verb transitive, energetically to belabour with a verbal slapstick. This is an operation which, in literature, particularly in the drama, is commonly fatal to the victim. Nevertheless, the liability to a cursing is a risk that cuts but a small figure in fixing the rates of life insurance. Cynic Noun A blackguard whose faulty vision sees things as they are, not as they ought to be. Hence the custom among the Scythians of plucking out a cynic's eyes to improve his vision. End of letter C